All right, so over the past month, I probably had over 100 requests from people on my channel that wants me to make a tutorial on Facebook ads for SMMA that works in 2022. So in today's video, I did just that. Now, if you're not into SMMA social media marketing agency, this Facebook ad strategy is still going to apply to you. So if you're running, for example, let's say an e-commerce store or a local business, this advertising strategy is still going to work for you. So what I did today is I spent two hours setting up a PowerPoint, going over how to run Facebook ads step by step. And it's going to be a complete beginner tutorial. So in the beginning of it, it's going to be ridiculously simple and basic. But the further we get into it, the more advanced the video is going to get. And once we get to the end of this video, we're actually going to get into some really advanced advertising strategies that the gurus are charging $2,000 or more for. But as you know, on my channel, we're keeping it real. So I'm going to give you all the information for completely free. I don't have any course. I have absolutely nothing to sell you. And over the past year, I've been operating a marketing agency that's producing over $100,000 profit every single month. And I'm using this channel to document my journey and I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. On this channel, I show you my results. I show you my mistakes. I pretty much just show you like everything on how to run this business, but I'm not going to waste your time. So let's get into the PowerPoint. But before we get into it, I just have to tell you that this video is going to be life changing. There is just no doubt. This is one of the best videos on Facebook ads out there. So you have to grab your notepad and set aside some time. You should really just not be the guy that just skips through the whole video and just notes down some weird stuff. Like this video is really about to change your game. So if you have clients or you're looking to get clients, this is the exact strategy that you can use to get results for your clients. So do not click off and just set aside 15 minutes or 20. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, just set aside 30 minutes because you just have to watch this like it's literally gonna change your game. But let's get inside of my computer and actually look at the presentation. All right, welcome to my complete Facebook ad tutorial for SMMA. But as it says, I mean, it works for any type of business. And as you also say, it says complete Facebook in one word, maybe I think that that's weird. But anyways, this is a step by step guide that's going to teach you literally everything on how to run Facebook ads in 2022, whether you have an agency, which this video is directed towards agency owners. But even if you have an e-commerce stores or a local business, this advertising strategy is still going to apply to you. So grab your notepad because this is going to be one of the best videos you have seen about Facebook marketing. And I'm still here. My camera just doesn't really fit the presentation. All right. So before you run Facebook ads, there's a couple of things you need to know. And these are absolutely must know things. So make sure that these things are prepared. If you're working with a client, make sure that the client already got all this set up. So the first thing is going to be the Facebook pixel. The Facebook pixel has to be installed on the client's website. And the Facebook pixel is the thing you use to track conversions and the thing used to track data. So if you don't have a Facebook pixel, you're not going to be able to see what's make the sales and you're just not going to get any data. The second thing you need is to figure out how to use their ad account. And what I recommend to do here is to be an admin on the client's ad account. You do not want to run the ads on your own personal account. You don't want to risk a ban or anything like that. So what you want to do is just to have the client open a business manager and they probably will have a business manager already. And what you then need to do is you need to give your email out to the business so that they can add your email as an admin to their ad account and their business manager. And once you have admin access there, you can run their ads. Now, the next thing you need to know is how you're going to pay for ads. And what I recommend here, and this is just a must do, you have the client put in his card or PayPal or whatever he or she chooses to pay for ads with into their ads managers. So you're not going to spend any of your own budget. If the client pays you 2k, you just profit that money. You're not going to spend any of that money on the advertising. You want to make sure that the client is actually paying for the ads and have their card inside of their ad account. The next thing you want to have prepared, and this is going to be very easy, especially if you're working with a business. So if you're doing SMMA, it's going to be pretty simple, I would assume, at least in most cases, you want to have a verified business manager and a verified business manager means that the client has been putting in their documents into the Facebook manager, which means, you know, they've been putting in their business documents onto the ads manager, because if you don't have a verified business manager, you are risking getting banned. And if you get banned, it's just going to be a headache. You can always solve a ban. It's not really a big deal, but you just really want to have a verified business manager. So just check that with your client. You can run without it, but just know that that's on your own risk. Verified managers doesn't really get banned unless you're breaking the rules. And I know the PowerPoint is a little bit boring because you can't see me, but this is a study session. All right. If you're serious about your business, you should watch this, even though it's a little bit boring. But anyways, let's go through the ads manager structure. So when you first get into the Facebook business manager, it's going to be very confusing. I totally get it. But that's why I'm making this video and I'm making it ridiculously simple for beginners. And as I said in the beginning of this video, the later on we get into the video, the more advanced it's going to get. And just before we get into that, hopefully we'll click a like on the video and subscribe because I'm trying to be as transparent as possible here and just create a really great channel that just helps people and also have a completely free discord group no upsells i don't ever try to sell you anything that's it linked in the description full of agency owners and entrepreneurs who just really wants to change your life and i'm always in there giving out free advice but the business manager getting on facebook and advertising for the first time can feel incredibly confusing i remember when i first were there i learned most of this myself but i did have a mentor just kind of help me out just to understand the structure but the facebook ads manager is going to be very very hard to understand when you first get into it so i'm going to show you one of my ad managers that i've been using for multiple clients 
So let's just get inside of my computer and get into the more kind of advanced stuff. It's still very simple. And then after that, we're going to get into all the strategies. You're going to see exactly how to make tons of money for your clients. But let's get inside of my ads manager. All right. So we're inside my ads manager and I'm about to show you just how this whole thing works. So I'm not going to look at the camera really, but let's get into it. So as you can see, this is probably very confusing, but quickly though, we can see that we have a campaign, right? So we have different campaigns. What's going on inside of all these campaigns you will be able to see here in a second, but we have different campaigns and just let's look at one of them. Spend 29,000 pounds. So that's more than dollars, probably $35,000. I don't know. It's just a little bit more than dollars. Let's just pretend it's dollars. $29,000 or 30,000 and we generated 92,000. So that means for every dollar spent, we made $3.09 back. So that's a decent return. We can obviously always get it higher on this campaign. We have 3.4, but it's still a pretty profitable campaign as we had a very high margin on this product and it generated over 2,800 sales. So what we can see is we have a bunch of different columns. The first one is the name of the campaign, which you can make whatever you want. Then we have delivery. That's just whether or not the campaign is on. So I'm going to ignore some metrics. So just know that the metrics that I ignore and don't talk about are stuff that you don't even need to worry about either. The next thing we're going to have is the budget. And this just shows how much the campaign is spending every single day. So one of them is a CBO. I'll get way more advanced. I'm going to explain all of it. Spending $180 a day. And this one are individual inside of the ad set. And I'm going to get into that. So what we can see is the amount spent. So as I said, 29,000 or 30,000 generated or go over here again, 92,000. Then we have the reach, how many people it's reached, pretty obvious. Then we have the results, which is, you know, how many purses it's been. And then we have the cost per results. So these are pretty much all the columns that you need when you actually run a campaign. You should also have click to rate, add to carts, etc. So let's get into that. So as you can see, the cost per result here is 10 pounds. But as I said, let's pretend it's dollars. $10.13 is it's pretty reasonable, but we should probably see a higher ROAS as well. Then we can also see the link clicks. It's not really something you have to see, but you could. We can also see the add to carts and you can add a bunch of columns. So let's get into that. But first, First of all, let's talk about ROAS. This is the main metric you have to pay attention to when running an agency or just anything that has to do with ads. ROAS is basically how profitable they are. It's the return on ad spend. So if you have a ROAS of three, that means for every dollar you spend, you make three back. If you have a ROAS of 10, every dollar you spend, you make 10 back. It's pretty much just a return on investment kind of, right? The return on ad spend. And then we just have the value, how much you've sold for. So what you can do is you can come up to columns here and you can customize your own columns. So we could go for multiple metrics there. Now you should just copy what I have so you can search them up here. You can search for website at ROAS, you can search for budget, you can search for link clicks, some of these you will already have. But one thing you should search for is CTR. So that is the click to rate what percentage of people that are watching are clicking actually onto your website or whatever you're advertising to. So if you have a click to rate percentage of one, that means that one out of 100 is clicking on your site. And if you have a click to rate of five or 10, that means that five or 10 out of 100 is clicking on your website. And an ideal click to rate is going to be anything over five. So if you have a campaign that's running at let's say 2% click to rate, you should just get a new video ad or a new audience because it's just clearly not working. You cannot just judge results based off of a low click to rate. So it's very important that you actually master these things that we'll get into in a second, but definitely want to add click to rate. So now I just added it. We should be able to see it's actually not that high, but if we see at one of the cameras, we had a 4.2, which is reasonable, but you kind of want to have it higher. But as I said, though, you can come up to columns, you can customize them and just put in any metric you want. So as we see, I have the budget, I have the ROAS, just pause the video here if you want to see, but you should have most of these already. But now let's get into what you probably have been waiting for, how to actually run your Facebook ads and how to just perform in incredible and make money for your clients and for your own store or whatever it is that you're trying to advertise. Let's get into the actual strategy. All right. So now that we've been through the structure of the Facebook ads manager, we have to talk about what makes a good campaign. A good campaign can be multiple things, but usually would be sales. Or if you're doing lead gen, a good campaign could be how many leads you're getting. Just basically a successful ad. So there's four main key factors to what makes a good campaign, a good product, which is what makes you money. And the first one is the product. I have to be honest with you. If you're working with a client that has a bad product, it's going to be hard for you to get results, even though you are an expert. I'm just telling you, I'm very, very confident in my Facebook ad skill. But if my client has a horrible product, and I'm just saying like most of them don't really have that. But if they have a horrible product, it's just going to be very hard for you. I have to be honest to make them good sales. A good ad won't sell a bad product. Now, the next key factor of a campaign that's performing good is the creative. A creative is basically what you show them, the video and the text. So a creative could be a photo that they look at and click through. A creative can be a video, basically just the content, right? The creative is everything on Facebook because it's obvious. If you don't have good content, if there's nothing cool to pay attention to, people are just going to scroll. Like, why would they watch something that's boring? And why would they watch a creative that just doesn't apply to them? So if you're, for example, selling a pain relief product for a client of yours that's going to help them with neck pain, you have to be relatable. You should 
should have a testimonial in it that talks about someone else's story who actually felt better after using the product. It's just very important that you have a good creative. And a good creative is typically first an introduction. So that's a hook. So if you have back pain, that could be someone laying down, stretching their back, and then you hear the crack sound, the sound of relief. Then you show the product. And then after that, you get into a testimonial. Someone talking positively about the product. And in the end, it's CTA, call to action. You're making someone come from your video ad or photo ad onto your website. The next thing is the audiences. What types of interests should you target? Well, the audience in creative is heavily involved with each other because a creative is basically a marketing analyst. You see it down here in the left corner. The creative is kind of a type of your approach. So if the creative is, for example, something like say goodbye to acne and then the audience is people that doesn't struggle with acne, but they struggle with blackheads. Well, you're kind of missing out. So the creative has to match the audience. So if you're selling a neck pain product, you should not target arm pain as the audience, right? You should have neck pain in the video and neck pain in the audience. So the audience has to relate to the video. This is where most people go wrong. They have a good creative, but the audience doesn't relate to it. So the click to rate is not just a video ad because if the video ad doesn't have the right audience, they're not going to click. So if you want to have a high click to rate on your campaigns, which we talked about, it's just key. You have to have an audience that fits the video because you know, it's just, it's just like music, right? Like a guy that listens to pop music, probably not that interested in like rock or metal, right? So it's just obvious, right? The audience has to match the creative. The fourth key factor that makes a good campaign is the marketing angle. This is your approach. It's pretty obvious. I mean, it's called marketing angle. I guess you understand what it means, but it is the approach you're taking. So marketing angle could, for example, be something such as like, say goodbye to blackheads. And you know, you've been struggling for too long. It could be an emotional one, right? Like you deserve better. Or another marketing angle could be aggressive. Like it's time to take control of your life. Or another one could be a funny marketing angle. Like there's so many different approaches. But the thing that is important is that the marketing angle matches the creative and the creative matches the audience. The product doesn't have to match because that's obvious, right? Like you would obviously not target something that doesn't relate to the product. But if you can have a marketing angle that matches the creative and the audience, I mean, the creative has a lot to do with the marketing angle, you're pretty much good. It's going to be like very easy for you at this point. So these are the four pillars of a successful campaign. And if you can master all four of these, you're going to have a very easy time making some else or making another business or yourself money through Facebook ads. It's really not that difficult as long as you have a strategy. And on the next slide, I'm literally going to teach you the exact strategy. Everything is going to be incredibly good. And if you just follow this video and you launch it, you are going to make results for your clients. So if you have the four pillars down, you have a good product, you have good creatives, you have a good audience and you have a good marketing angle, it's going to be very easy for you. And what you can now do is to actually get into the strategy. So let's look at the strategy. How do we actually advertise? All right, how to launch your first ads. Now, after this slide, I'm literally going to launch ads in front of you or not publish them, but I'm going to show you exactly how to launch ads. So you will see a walkthrough on that on my screen inside of my own Facebook account. But before that, let's look at it. So on Facebook, you can choose the budget. You can choose pretty much everything. And this is all going to make sense in the next section of the video when we actually look at it on my screen. But your campaign has to run for $10 a day. There's no point running for anything more than that unless you're doing lead gen. But I'm not talking about lead gen right now. We're talking about selling physical products. This can also work for memberships, gyms. It can work for everything. You should just always want to work with a new client or you have your own stores. I'm just going to refer to clients now, but this is the exact same strategy if you are drop shipping or whatever you do. So ignore the client aspect if you don't have clients, but this strategy is always going to work. So what you do is you run an ad set at $10 a day and you're going to have seven ad sets. So that is $10 times seven, which means you're going to spend roughly $70 a day. And what you want to have is you want to have one interest in each. So that's also going to be seven interests, one in each. And then you're going to target 18 to 65 in the years. And I know this probably sounds confusing. If you're selling a product to older people, why would you target 18 to 65? Why wouldn't you just target 40 to 65 and 65 is plus by the way it doesn't cap at 65 now the reason for that is that facebook optimizes in a very strange way and if you mess too much around with the optimization you're going to have a little bit of a problem so the best thing to do on facebook nowadays is to keep it broad and the thing that's so interesting about a platform is that when you keep it broad it does everything for you that's where people fail at facebook ads they want to take more control and then let facebook do but you do 18 to 65 and if the product or whatever you're selling is selling more so towards 50 year olds facebook is going to stop spending money on 20 and 30 and 40 year olds. They're only going to spend money where it works. Same if you have, for example, five countries, the next section there is the country. Are you going to go worldwide? Top five, you know, UK, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and United States. This can be your top five countries. There's many approaches, but let's just say you're running to these five countries and it starts selling a lot in Australia. Facebook is going to stop spending money on United States. You're going to stop spending money on UK, Canada, New Zealand. So that's the great thing. You don't really have to narrow down. The second you start narrowing down your ads, you're pretty much messing up the optimization. Now, the next thing you want to do is in a test campaign, you want to have two to three creatives. That means two video ads, for example, and one photo. A creative, you can pretty much just call it the content. So I typically structure it like, let's say two videos of the product and one photo. That's a pretty good formula because if you only have $10 a day, you don't want to spend, you know, $1 per, right? You want to just have two to three. So you have some breathing room, new dollar can spend 
anywhere. So that means that in a total campaign, you're going to have seven interests and you're going to have $10 a day per, which means $70 and seven interests. All right. So now that we talked about some things that probably just sounds weird to you, I'm actually going to show you how to do it. So it all makes sense because now maybe you're thinking if you're not an experienced advertiser, what is $10 a day? What is 865? How do I even choose that? Well, let's get inside of my ads manager that I showed you earlier in this video. And I'm actually just going to break it all down for you. So let's just look at it. All right. So now we're inside of my ads manager and I'm going to show you how to launch your first campaign. Hopefully by now you click a like on the video and subscribe. I just would truly appreciate it. It's really the only thing I would need in return. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. But please just click a like and subscribe. That'd be super awesome. But now let's actually look at it. So we here have the ads manager that we just talked about. These are all campaigns. So what you want to do is you want to create a campaign. Now on this account, we can't create a campaign right now. So I'm just going to edit it, but you want to come over here and create a campaign. So let's look inside of the campaign. The first thing we do is we name the campaign, the product or whatever we're selling. I mean, this is just my strategy. You don't have to do this. The name doesn't affect the performance, but let's just say that I'm selling an acne remover. I'm going to name the campaign acne remover, for example. Then you scroll down here. And as I talked about, if there's something that I don't mention, then just don't bother. Don't think about it. So if you think like, why didn't he talk about AB test? Well, AB test is irrelevant now. You don't have to worry about it. Or why didn't he talk about auction type? Well, just don't touch it. Leave it to the basic. So what we do is we name it. Then we come down here. We don't want to mess with the campaign budget optimization. It's very good, but not when starting. All right. So I just changed the campaign. So here we have a campaign. You want to run seven or six ad sets a day when starting. But this campaign is going to be just five ad sets for now because I'm not going to add more, but pretend it's seven. So as you can see, here's the campaign. And here is the ad set under the ad set is the video ad. So there's one ad set, two, three, four, five, right? Pretty simple. You want to have six or seven, but I just have five for the example of it. So now let's scroll to the actual ad sets. What you can do is you have to set up the conversions. It's very simple. Just follow what it says. What you want to aim for is purchase. Always optimize for purchase unless you're doing lead gen, but I would just assume you don't in this video. Then what you want to do is you want to schedule ads. And I recommend you just schedule your ads to midnight just to keep it like simple. There's no point taking any risk. So just like a great rule, just schedule them to midnight because the thing is, when you run Facebook ads, you want to make changes only once per day, because if not, you can kind of mess a little bit with optimization. So a good rule is just to publish your ads at 12 every single day, because then you are sticking to the once per day rule. So you can schedule it to 12, but you can make your own time. I mean, you can start scheduling 3 p.m. all the time, 5 p.m., 11 a.m., whatever you want to. Then we come down to the country. So here you have to pick. I'm not going to make this decision for you because it completely depends on what you're selling. Are you going to target the UK? Are you going to go worldwide? If you go worldwide, you can exclude third world countries. So you can go worldwide. I can actually show you this right now because worldwide is very good. So if you look at my screen here, I mean, I guess you're already looking at my screen, we can search for worldwide, then we can put in the whole region, then we can switch from include to exclude. So then we can, for example, exclude Africa, because they're most likely not going to buy from us, then we can exclude Mexico, I mean, just coming up with random examples, but you can pretty much exclude anything you would like to exclude. And that's pretty much it, you can go worldwide, you can do whatever, but this is up to you, we just target a country that performs good. So you want to ask your client what he's been doing well with in the past. And if it's new, you will just have to test. And if you don't have any clue, just go by the top four or five countries, just go actually just go like United Kingdom, USA and Canada, or you can go with European countries totally depends on the market. But you know, if your client has had success in Australia before you just want to target Australia play it safe, right? So the next thing you want to do is you want to come down to the ages. So you can edit that 18 to 65. Now I know it's a 30 here, but this is a little bit older campaign, just stick to the basics here 18 to 65 plus then you come down to the interest. So let's just say we're selling an acne product, we could for example, search for acne and it's not going to show up because there is no interest on Facebook called acne. So what can we do? We can we for example, search for skin, uh, skincare. Well, that's basic. Everyone's going to target skincare. That's the thing. Like if you're starting out and you have no data, no advantages, it's going to be very hard for you to break into a huge interest like skincare. So if you're selling a skincare product, you shouldn't target skincare because it's just where all your competitors are. So you have to just find your own little untapped interest. So that could, for example, be like targeting maybe like Kylie Jenner. She has a skincare brand. The people interested in her are most likely into skincare, but it's not as direct, right? So you're not competing with a huge market. You're finding an untapped interest that still has the same type of audience. So now target targeting an interest like that, you're going to be able to actually move away from the big competition. You could also target different interests such as beautiful skin, natural skincare. It's a little bit more specific when all your competitors are targeting skincare, you could target beautiful skin, you could target dermatology, you know, just a bunch of nerdy skincare interests because you don't want to go where the mass is going. But let's say we're selling an acne product. Though. We can surf for skin. No, don't want to run any of this. Actually, let's run beautiful skin. Then we can click suggestions here. It's going to show us so many good interests and keep in mind the interest is what's going to sell, right? Like if you target the wrong interest, you're failing the whole marketing angle perspective, right? So we can 
can maybe go with cosmetics, you can go with anti-aging cream, face, just what I want to teach you is that you can use the suggestion bar. It's going to show you 30 suggestions of things that's similar to interest. So if we, for example, where to go with Netflix, and then we hit suggestions, I'm going to show right now. Netflix is a very good interest, by the way. I, I don't really know why, but you will see similar stuff, right? So suggestion is going to be your best friend when trying to find good interest, but you also want to make sure that you are a little bit untapped. So next thing we can do is to click on the detailed targeting button. When you first start out, I'm telling you, you really should have it on because I told you, leave it up to Facebook. When you first start out, they know better than you. They just do. They know better than me too, because I'm not a system. I'm not a machine. I kind of look like a machine, but I'm, I'm just not. So what you want to do is you want to hit reach people beyond your, de yeah, why do I say the whole thing? You just want to hit the detailed targeting button, all right? And then when you scale, when you're like actually trying to make more money, trying to make changes, you can turn that thing off later. And then you want to go with placements. I don't recommend doing manual. The reason we do manual here is because we just tried out something new. You always just want to go with every placement. And the thing is like, if your video doesn't fit stories, it's not going to go to stories anyway. So, so many people are always worried like I don't want to do automatic because it says like it's going to be showing reels and stories. No, if it doesn't fit there, it's not going to be shown. So always go automatic when starting and that's it. And now one very important thing, Facebook is going to try to trick you. As you can see here, they're going to say like some audience locations aren't available for reads. Okay, that is fine. They're also going to say, they don't say it here, but they might say that ads that may get serious sales. Don't listen to them. They're just trying to spend your money like weird places. They're also going to say estimate audience size. And this is all false. So you have to trust yourself and not Facebook. The next thing you want to do is you want to hit next, then you're going to get led into the ad part. So this ad cannot be edited because the Facebook page has been disconnected from this ads manager. So we made a new ad account. I can't show the name of it, but up in the left corner, we made a new ad account where we have actually have their Facebook page. But inside of here is very simple. It's straightforward. It's going to show you exactly what to do. Only thing you need now is to actually put in the video ad or the photo, then you put in the text. So the text could be something like take care of your skin today, natural acne cream, something like that. And like get started Then you put in a bit the link. So you shorten down the link, click this link to get started. And then under that, you can put in like free worldwide shipping or stock is limited 50% off, it can be pretty much anything and then just going to hit a button called shop now. And that's it. You now set up your first ad. All right. So that is how you test something on Facebook. So whenever you work with a new client, even though they might have ads going on, they might be making sales, you should always just launch a campaign with like seven ads. So it's a $10 a day just to test the water just to see what's up, see how it's working, see how their ad account is working, see if it's getting any sales. So I'm just recommending you like regardless of how they are performing, just always launch a test. So what are you going to do after this test is the main question because the test isn't really going to make you thousands of dollars. Now, don't get me wrong. One time I tested something and I made a return of 7000. But it's just not normal test is probably going to make you like $200. It depends on their off, right? If it's high ticket, like it costs 1000, you can make 1000. But a test is going to you know, not give you that many sales. But what you do after the test is most certainly going to make you a lot of sales or a lot of return on their investment. So let's look at it what you do after a test. But before that, let me show you a couple of different scenarios when you're testing something on Facebook. All right, so let's talk about the different scenarios that can happen after a test because there's so many things that can happen. First thing that can happen is you know, you get zero sales. This is scenario number one, if you don't get any sales, just cut the campaign and relaunch. I don't know what it says reload. It's supposed to say relaunch. I don't know why. But you want to cut the campaign, and just make it over again. That means that you can try, for example, new interest, right? You can try a new demographic. If you have a low click to rate, you can try a new video. But when you relaunch, just try new stuff. Now your second scenario is that you get just one sale or one lead or you know, whatever. So if you get one sale, leave it running another 12 to 24 hours. So what you can do now is you can cut an ad set and add a couple of new interests, but mainly you just want to run it another day. And now before I forget this, never touch your ads when testing. This is important. I cannot stress this enough. When you're testing something out, don't touch your ads. You have to give them a the full 24 to 30 hours. But if you get one sale, just leave it running like another day, 12 to 24 hours to see the performance on it, because it might actually pick up Facebook is sometimes slow. Now, the third scenario is a little bit good, you get two plus sale, right? Uh, add new audiences and cut bad ad sets. So if you get two plus sales, let's just say you get two, what you can do is you can cut two of your seven ads. That means you cut two of your interest, and then you can just exchange those interests into new interests. But the same rule applies here, leave it running another day, because you're hoping for scenario four. And the fourth scenario is that you get three plus sales in one ad set. What you do then is you duplicate and scale and this is where you really make money. So buckle your seat belts because this is going to be the best part of the whole presentation. This is why I told you to stay to the end. This is what gurus literally charge $2,000 or more for. I'm going to reveal all of it for free. So you get three plus sales in one ad set. That means the ad set is probably qualified. It has a high chance of making good money for your client. So what we're going to do now is going to scale it. Now, if it's not performing well, check your metrics. Check if the click rate, for example, is low. If your click rate is 2%, you should relaunch. You should just make the campaign from scratch with a new video or a new marketing 
angle or a new audience. So it's very important to check your metrics to see why it's not working. Because the thing is, when you have the skill of Facebook ads, it's not really that much luck, right? So if it's not working, you have to figure out why. All right, so now we've gotten pretty far. Let me actually teach you how to make your clients or yourself money. It's gonna break down everything. How do we scale? What is scaling? Well, scaling is figuring out what's working and making that work even better and cutting what's not working. You just wanna focus on what works, find more things that work, test out multiple things. But let me show you how to scale. And this is gonna be very advanced. So take it slow, bring your notepad, but I'm gonna make it as beginner friendly as possible. And by the way, I just wanted to tell you that I document my whole journey on my Instagram right here. I show you my agency results. I show you my clients. I literally show you like everything from traveling to all the fun stuff that I do to behind the scenes of my agency. And I'm not trying to sell you anything there either. Okay, so don't worry. There's just so many gurus out there trying to sell and I just want to make it crystal clear. I'm not trying to sell you anything. Okay, I, I can't say it enough because some guy said in the comments that I'm trying to sell him a software just because I said like you should use this software. It's so good. And he thought I was sponsored. I'm not. I'm, I'm not trying to take your money in any way. So with that being said, let's get into the very advanced stuff. Let's jump back into my ads manager and talk about scaling. All right. So we're inside of my ads manager. How do we actually scale? Well, let's just take this good campaign as an example. If we go into it, we can sort it by, let's just say, for example, results. Now, can I actually find it? Yeah, here it is. Just look past it. So results, one ad set has 180 in sales and it's doing $25 a day. Uh, we spent 1000 and it's made 180 in sales. So we can also sort by row as just to see the return. Some of these ads have been incredibly profitable. As you can see, if we only spent 20 dollars to generate let's scroll to the side to generate 151 so that's a 70 row as for every dollar we spend we make seven dollars back but now let's actually sort it by results first we want to find the criteria so you tested a product and it fit the criteria that is three sales or more right so let's just say it's three but it is five it just fits the criteria of three sales or more so what we can do with it is as a high row as too so it's probably going to work we can duplicate this ad set so i'm gonna do it we duplicate and we only change one thing this is incredibly important what we do is we scroll down we put it from ten dollars a day to twenty five dollars a day and then what you do is you just publish. That is literally it. You're doing vertical scaling. So there's multiple types of scaling, horizontal scaling, vertical scaling. Horizontal scaling is just making tons of duplicates, keeping the budget the same often, just testing a lot. Vertical scaling is aggressive scaling. You're just taking the budget and doubling it. So if something works, you should just take the budget from 10 a day to 25 a day just instantly, because that's where you really see results. And $25 ads are just so much better than 10, but you don't want to do that when testing. $25 ads can bring you thousands of sales, as you saw on the other example I just showed you. So what you want to do is just to increase the budget and then just going to publish. Then you can do another duplicate where you just leave the budget at $10 and you scroll down and change the detail targeting button. Now, I don't know why it's not showing anymore, but you guys remember the detail targeting button is going to be right there. You just click on the detail targeting button. If it was on, you turn it off. If it was off, you turn it on. You're basically just split testing that button to see if it's going to work better with it off or on. So those are your two main duplicates. Now, there's one more thing you can do. Let's look at it. So just going to close this. Now it's going to say draft in the corner, but ignore that. So the last thing you can do is horizontal scaling. You remember, I just talked about this. You don't have to remember the metrics whether you're doing horizontal or vertical. Nobody's not really going to care about that. But horizontal scaling is just a straight up duplicate to begin with. You don't do anything. That's the thing. It's just a copy. So what this allows you to do is it allows you to find new segments of the audience, which means that the $10 one maybe didn't optimize perfectly. Maybe there's a better audience for it. So what you can do is just a straight up copy. Just duplicate and don't change anything. So you're basically just making a new ad set that is the exact same to see if it can perform better. And what you can then do if that hits three sales, you just duplicate it and repeat the process. $25 a day. It can be whatever. So the great thing about scaling is that you pretty much just repeat this. There's way more to it. But whenever you scale, you should always do these same things over and over again. You constantly want to find new interests at $10 a day. You constantly want to test new things. Whenever you get new ad sets to three sales, you duplicate them to 25. Whenever you get ads to 20 sales, for example, you duplicate them to 50. You always play test expand detail targeting. You always make copies. You just keep repeating this. You always want to have new ad sets at three sales, new interests, just new stuff all the time you have to test. So this process, you're going to repeat even if you're doing $20,000, $50,000 a day. You're always going to repeat this process. But now we're getting into the advanced stuff. So now that you start to make $25 duplicates, you're trying to just do everything, you just keep the cycle going, keep duplicating. Your next goal is to get multiple answers to seven sales in order for you to actually start scaling aggressively. Now, this is my strategy, right? There's so many different ways you can do it. So I'm not going to say it's, you know, the perfect strategy. It is very good. Actually, it is the perfect strategy. There's many other good strategies out there too. But when you do ads, only stick to one strategy. You cannot mix it up. So your next ideal scenario is that you get three ad sets or more to seven sales. So we can look at this right here. We have three ads that fits the criteria. It can obviously be more than seven too, you know, the more the better. But you want to have three to five ad sets that's sitting at seven sales or more. And what we can now do is we can start spending a lot of money. This is going to be a little bit scary because you're going to spend hundreds of dollars. But I'm telling you, if it fits the criteria, if you have seven sales and it's like kind of profitable in three to five ad sets, it's probably always going to work. Like it fails only like one out of 10 times. So this is very, very safe in most kids. What we can now do, we have three, but you can also have five, right? What we can then do is we can duplicate them. And now we have to duplicate them into a new campaign. So just name the campaign in the product name and then CBO. So 
acne product CBO campaign budget optimization. So let's get into new campaign. I'm going to show you what you're going to do now. This is where it really starts getting you have to click on top here to get inside of the campaign. You now want to scroll down and ignore the errors this is because the page isn't here, right? You're not going to have errors. You want to come down here and you want to activate campaign budget optimization. So we're going to do $150 a day. And the reason for that is because we have three ad sets. Each ad set is going to run for $50 a day. Now it's not technically going to run for $50 a day because Facebook is going to spend it how they want to, but each ad set equals $50. So if you have 10 ad sets, that's 50 times 10, 500. If you have five ad sets, 250 a day, two ad sets, 100, but you don't really want to do this with less than three. So we have three ad sets at $50 times three. Now the thing is Facebook in the campaign budget optimization is going to spend the money where they like. That means that Facebook is going to spend money on the good performing ad sets and stop spending money on the bad ones. So they're just going to push the good ad sets a little bit extra. So even though we have $150 and each ad set equals $50, that doesn't mean they're going to spend that. They might spend $120 on one ad set and just 15 on the remaining ones. And this is a great thing. Facebook is finding a winning ad set. They're just doing everything for you at this point. And then you can just keep it going. If the CBO works, what you want to do is you want a vertical scale. The CBO should only be scaled vertically. So if this works, it's doing 150 a day. I'm going to duplicate the whole campaign and put it to 300 a day. If 300 a day works and it's making me multiple sales and it's profitable, I'm just going to go from 300 a day to 600 a day. You just double budgets on the CBO and it just works every time. The only bad thing is the CBO is probably just going to work like weak. So you have to find new interests, right? You have to constantly find new ad sets that fits the criteria. So if you go back into the campaign right now, we can see that, yeah, we just launched a CBO. That's whatever. But we have multiple Multiple more ad sets we can do this with. Like we have four ad sets here. They have way more than seven sales. Can make a new CBO right here, right? So let's get all of them. Let's get one, two, three, four, five. And CBO is basically just your life when you get to this point. So what we can do is we can make a new CBO for acne product. You can go down here. We now have five ad sets. You don't really want to have more than 10 in one, but you're probably not going to get to that point yet. So I wouldn't worry. Then get into the actual campaign. And we now have five ad sets. So we're going to activate CBO. That's $50 per. So that is a $250 CBO. If it works, you're just going to duplicate it and double the budget from $250 to $500. Now, this really works, but I know it's scary to spend as much money as this. But I'm telling you, if you fit the qualifications of seven sales and everything is working fine, you are probably going to make it work. It's probably going to be safe. So it's really that simple. You just want to repeat the process back to scratch, find new interest, get it to three sales, get it to seven sales, make CBOs and just all of this. You're just going to repeat the process and you're just going to make so much money. And the further you get into it, the more ads you're going to get, the more sales you're going to make. But you have to remember if an ad set is not making money, if you spend $15 a day on a $10 ad set and it didn't make a single sale, you have to cut the ad set. If you want to be profitable, you have to cut your losses, right? If I just leave this whole campaign running and I never cut anything, I'm not going to be that profitable. So if you have a CBO, just say it fails. It usually doesn't. You have to cut it, okay? You can't run it for long. So I cut an ad set after 24 to 30 hours of spending because that means it spent a whole day's budget. And if it doesn't work after 24 to 30 hours, I'm just going to cut it and move on and find new stuff. But it's incredibly important that you constantly find new audiences. You constantly get new video ads, creatives, photos, just everything again. You have to understand this is the most important thing I can tell you in this video that you always have to repeat the cycle. You have to get new access to three sales, new interest, new CBOs. You can never stop doing this. I mean, you can have a hundred CBOs if you want to. Probably not going to be allowed to do that on one ad account. So you have to have multiple ad accounts, but you're just going to repeat the process. Now, one more thing you have to understand is that a creative might die out. And if a creative dies out, you have to find new videos. So you have to make a campaign where you just put like five different videos into it to test out different videos. You can test out the first five seconds, right? See if you can grab their attention in a better way. You can test out 10 different photos. You constantly have to be on the lookout for a better video ad, I guess a higher click to rate because without a good click to rate, you're not going to make results with Facebook ads, right? So always try new creatives. I mean, Facebook is basically just about testing new stuff. That's what I can't stress enough. You just constantly have to be testing new stuff. All right. So that's going to be it for today's video. And I'm going to make a follow up on this. I'm going to make a way more in depth guide. So this is not all of it. This is just the introduction because I don't want it to get too advanced. I want it to be simple for you to just follow. But if you're interested, I'll make a follow up going way more in depth, probably like two, three, four hours breaking down literally everything from ad account bans to all of this, but this is not things you should worry about. When you do this, just only worry about what I just told you. And if you encounter any problems, just chat in the Discord group. I'm probably going to answer you. Discord group got you on everything. So I hope that you liked the video, that you click a like on it and subscribe to my channel. And as I said, you can follow my Instagram because, you know, I document my whole journey on there just like I do on YouTube, but you get to see way more behind the scenes and stuff. So I really appreciate you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. And I just want to say we're doing a YouTube takeover. We're going to post like three times a week. So I'll see you in the next video.